Hey, Jeff, how are you? I'm well. How are you, Mel? Good. It's good to see you. Same here. It's been a few months. Yeah, it has been. How have you been doing with all this quarantine stuff? <laughs> to be honest with you, um, it, it's had, I wouldn't say there's any pros to it. Um, it's had definitely a lot of cons. Um, you know, I, I got sick after being in Miami. Uh, luckily, it didn't get to me as, as bad as it got to other people. Uh, it kind of knocked me out for about, I guess, a week and a half or so. Um, but I caught up a lot on every TV show you can imagine, every channel, Hulu, Netflix, I mean, you name it, we watched it. And um, so there's parts of it that really, really suck. You know, people who are dying from it or people who have been affected by it emotionally, physically, and financially. But the other part is that we were, once we were cleared to be around people, so to speak, you know, our little quarantine Kiki family, we actually grew closer to our friends and doing things that we wouldn't normally do, like cooking almost, almost every night and seeing our friends often and spending time with them uh, on a different level and in a different way than we normally would. So I'm ready for life to get back to normal, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But, you know, sometimes there's always a silver lining to things and the silver lining for this it brought me closer to certain people and, it, you know, um, I've, I've enjoyed getting closer to them. Mm -hmm. So um, for you viewers, um, Jeff is in Houston and um, he owns uh, Rich's Nightclub and also um, Rebar. And t tell me how, are you from Houston originally? No, I'm actually from outside of New Orleans. Mm -hmm. um, my dad's from Texas, <laughs> uh, my mom's from Louisiana. Uh, and so I was born and raised about 45 minutes uh, south of New Orleans. And so I moved to Houston in 1998, then on to Austin, a quick stint in Dallas. Um, and then uh, I have another bar also called Halo, which is in Bryan College Station, uh, home to Texas A&M University. So I've had that for 17 years. And then I came back to Houston for Riches and now Rebar. Did, did the, the nightclub business, is that what drew you to Texas or was it just you no. were a Texan? <laughs> um, I was young and I had a friend that was moving to Houston. My dad lived here. Uh, I had some family that already lived in Houston and um, it was a new adventure. I was very young and so I took it and moved to Houston and became a bartender, which soon uh, followed to Austin and became a bartender at All Ken Harry's in Austin. Um, and then eventually opening Halo and Bryan College Station, and then uh, Riches in Houston, and now Rebar in Houston. So it's basically the only industry that I really know. It's definitely the service industry. I, you know, I was a, uh, a waiter at one point. I was a bar back at one point. Then I became a bartender, and then the rest is history. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that um, Riches has... has it's got a pretty familiar name in the industry with everybody. Everybody knows what Riches in Houston is. Every yeah. DJ wants to play there, and I'm like, get in line, get in line. <laughs> well, the crazy part about it is that when I first moved here, I used to go to Riches. Um, I mean, it, Riches has been in Houston since 1983. Um, then soon after they opened Riches in Houston, they opened Riches in San Diego by the same ownership. And over the years, that has changed. Um, but... Uh, and a few times, Riches in Houston uh, might have changed names here and there, but ultimately, anybody from Houston has a Riches story, straight or gay. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, it, it's a special place for a lot of people, and it's still one for me. Um, I, was, I was actually inside the building a, a few uh, weeks ago. Um, you know, we've since moved to our new home, which is Rebar. But there's some things brewing that, you know, you never know where you might land back. So, <laughs> yeah, I know that the from the pictures that I've seen um, when I was doing Joe Ross's press kit, um, Riches. That's a pure, pretty huge venue. Like it looked like yeah. a church almost. Like it was with the. It was, it was the uh, largest, the largest uh, dance club in Houston. It's multiple levels. Um, how many square feet is it? Uh, close to twenty thousand square feet. Wow. You know, and uh, it was it was made to be a dance club. I was, 
it used to be um, the Richland Fan Company. That's where the name Riches comes from. Oh, okay. Um, and then it was vacant for a while, and then these investors literally built this giant building into a dance club, and it really functioned well at that. I mean, we would have, on an average Saturday night, seven, 800 people. On a busy Saturday night, twelve to 1,500 people. So, I mean, it could, it could pile in the people. Is there any other um, gay clubs in, in your area? Or were you, are yes. you the so, uh, where Rebar, Riches was in Midtown, which is about a five-minute jaunt from uh, Montrose, which is the gay area of Houston. And so there's several bars here in Montrose, um, a lot of bars, actually. Um, we are really the only dance club at the moment. Um, there's a lot of, there's, you know, like the Cheers of Bars is here. There's the Eagle that's here. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a favorite bar of mine. I don't go out often because it's like I'm already at, at Rebar. So at times when I do go out, it would definitely be, you know, to the bars of Montrose. Um, but yeah, there's, there's other bars within, you can literally walk to them in five or six minutes. The, the atmosphere behind you, you're at your club now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I wanted to, it's, you know, we've been shuttered for almost two months. Mm -hmm. And so we're actually doing a lot of renovating and updating to the club while we're, you know, while, while we're closed. And we've done some substantial renovating already. And so I'm excited for people to see it. A lot of it we wanted to accomplish when we opened in uh, September. We just didn't have the time. So, um, no I mean, excuses. Just, <laughs> right? No excuses now. <laughs> Right. Uh, so this venue is a lot more versatile than Rich's was. Like it, there's a beautiful patio. Um, there's also a, a very nice dance floor to my left. Um, technically speaking, dance floor is the actual footprint of the dance floor is the same size as the footprint of the dance floor at Rich's. Okay. Uh, this building is much smaller than Rich's, but I, like I said, Rich's was a mega club. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's different, there's different vibes to this building than there was at Rich's. You know, we have the patio, a patio bar, which is a little more quieter, more VIP seating areas and a dance floor. So it's, it's and it's closer. We're, we're in Montrose. We're in the neighborhood, so to speak. So that was really important. How, how does the name work? Because it was Rich's before you, before you bought it. And you just, you just kept it, the name Rich's? Does, are you associated with the one in California? So originally, um, it was opened in 1983, Riches Houston. A few years later, the same people opened Riches in San Diego. Mm -hmm. um, over the years, uh, I'm, from what I know, I'm the third owner of Riches Houston. Okay. Um, I know recently, I think the Riches in San Diego was sold to someone, maybe, I think maybe their general manager. We don't have an affiliation. At one time there was, but we don't. Um, but it's nice to, you know, it, Riches has a reputation. They have a great reputation. You know, Riches in Houston, you know, a great reputation. So, you know, not, not, a, not a bad situation to be in. Yeah, right. How, how, is, how is Houston overall, like with this whole COVID thing? Is it is well, complying with the stay at home and, you know, it, is it bad? I thing? would tell you, I think people are itching to get out. I think it's just natural, you yeah. know, uh, and I don't mean out as necessarily a bar. I just mean outside of the house. And I do know, I saw it for myself that, you know, Houston was really doing a good job about staying in and, you know, doing what, what the CDC or the, I guess, the World Health Organization and our, and our mayor and our governor, you know, people have, for the most part have been minding the rules and doing what was, you know, suggested and told to us. Um, well, us country folks, we always like to stay at home anyway, so. <laughs> it hasn't been too bad, that part of it hasn't been too bad, you know, um, but I'm itching to get out and I'm missing the, all of the parties and the events that in our industry, you know, Anthony and I, we like to do all that. It's a part of our life. Um, it's a big part of our life, not just because we're in it, but we also participate in it. And when we don't get to see our friends and our work industry family, you know, it's, it's sad. Like next weekend coming up, Memorial Day weekend, we're all supposed to be in Pensacola yeah, with you. Say, uh, we were supposed to go to that together and right. we and and it, made all kinds of plans. <laughs> right. I mean, it's one of my favorite events. And I, I know that it's, it's saddening that, that we can't go, but obviously we can't for the right reason. But 
overall with people in Houston, you know, um, it seems to be that people have been doing what was asked of them, but you can also tell within the last week, there is a lot more traffic. You can see a lot more people out. So people are starting to, I guess, fray, you know, they're, they're ready to, mm -hmm. to, to, I don't want to say take chances, but people are anxious. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed when I went to um, Alan T's the other day in Miami, the, it was like, it was a ton of traffic. It was almost like it was normal, like rush hour. I'm like, why are all these people out? Like, right. I mean, it went from where it was a ghost town and, you know, Houston's the fourth largest city in the country. Um, in a few years, it'll probably surpass Chicago, but it was a ghost town, literally. And now uh, I was watching the news before I came over here. There was traffic on the interstates. So literally like in a week or two, it's really made a difference. People are, the, the governor is starting to open up the state. I can't wait to get out there to Houston to, to see y'all. You know, that's, that's one of the first trips that I'm going to take is to come out there to I, see you guys. I hope so. Um, I've never even been to Texas. My dad was born in Texas, Corpus Christi, Texas. Um, but I've never been. I've never been. You I've know, got good friends that live in Dallas. Yeah. Friend too. Well, I mean, Louisiana is home, you know, for me. Um, some of my family still lives there. Some of my family lives here. Um, but... Texas, ultimately, I mean, Houston, so to speak, this is where I live. And, um, I mean. Well, I with the mustache, I would have, I would have, you put you in a lineup, I would have said, mm, there's the Texan. <laughs> well, the truth be told is that the, the mustache is really a goatee, but down below, it's just gray. It's oh, since okay. since yeah. the salons. The strobe lights or whatever, it's kind of, okay, there you go. <laughs> the salons have been closed. I haven't been able to hide my gray, so to speak. No, it looks good. It's a good look. Last time it was done was when I was coming to see you for winter party. So oh, yeah. that, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun weekend. It was. Oh my God, it wore me out. Like it was a lot, but it was it was a great experience, and we, we're coming back for sure. Good, good. I wanted to make sure that it was like the the best experience. So you, <laughs> since it was your first, <laughs> we didn't know what to expect, you know. But it was a great experience, and so you know we go to a lot of parties. We travel almost every month if there's a party somewhere um you know and we have our own party over easter weekend called revelry um obviously that was canceled um and it was real the bummer is that all these other parties are being canceled and, and that's some people probably won't understand how important it is to certain people to see their friends mm -hmm. and to experience the music you know um but to us it is and so it's a big letdown that so many things were canceled. You know, we love going to Pensacola. Um, we love going to P-Town for yes. July weekend. And we're still thinking about it. You know, Rick <clears throat> is a friend of ours. And so if he gives us the green light to come, meaning if he feels that we should come, even though the, you know, the big um, July 4th party on the beach is canceled, if he gives us the, the, you know, the okay that he feels that we should come, we're still coming you know, because it's our favorite place. And well, so, you tell him that I'm coming too. <laughs> all right, all right. You know, and nice I, I, I really like him. I do too, I do too. And, and I'm hoping that, you know, some of these parties that got pushed back to the fall, I'm hoping that, they, that they'll continue so we can go. You know, Atlanta Pride is another big one for us. Yes. You know, <clears throat> um, so we're going to that. We were going to go to market days this year, but it seems to be pushed back. But maybe we can make that too. So, I mean, we're hopeful. You have to do the market days for sure too. <laughs> I mean, hopefully it still happens, you know? Mm -hmm. And maybe mm -hmm. try to come, I mean, Circuit Miami is, is everything. So if we have that this year, that would be a, a, a great one to come to. Well, I've we've never been. The next year. We've never been and you've talked so highly about it. So mm -hmm. if we can come, we're coming, you know? <laughs> You know, in that Airbnb that we had, you know, we were so aggravated about the fact that we couldn't have any guests. And in the end, it ended up being like a blessing. Right. About it, you know? Right. I left, I gave them five stars, but then I had put a little complaint. I'm like, but don't, you can't have any guests, not, not one visitor whatsoever. And then right. when all the, this COVID stuff happened, I'm like, I wish I would like take that back. Cause I mean, it's a blessing. Cause I would, I would, cause for Circuit Miami, I counted, I had 42 boys in and out of my, my condo throughout the yeah. whole weekend, you know, they'd come by and we pre-kiki and then go to the club or whatever, no sleep, another club. 
And um, so there's no telling, like I would have had everybody over there. <laughs> uh, right, same, you know, I, uh, but you know, things happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. and like I said, you know, there's always the silver lining to things. And so, um, I mean, it was a great weekend. Yeah. Despite all the things that followed it, you know, um, yeah. we had a great time. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you for coming. It was a pleasure. And thank you for, for taking the time to talk with me today and, uh, you know, tell, tell everybody a little bit about your life. <laughs> over I there mean, in Texas. yeah, over here in Texas, it's, it's, you know, some people think that, Oh, it's, you know, it's Texas, a big red state, but you know, Dallas is very large. Houston's very large. Austin's large. San Antonio's large, you know, very, very large cities, all of which are blue, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so, you know, there's pros and cons to everything. Um, not everything is bigger in Texas, mm -hmm. but I like it. And so I hope that when all this kind of clears up, you can come and visit us. Um, you know, we were supposed to have Dan, you know, yes. uh, last weekend. Dan was supposed to be here last weekend. Yeah, he, he was he supposed to be here goes, in June. He goes, oh, I was, I was supposed to be in, in, in Houston. I, he yeah. said, I, I he sent me a message me. checking on me, you know, and, you know, Jesus was supposed to be here in, in June. Yeah. And, and um, we had a lot of people coming, but now it's like, oh, gosh. So hopefully, this is what I'm kind of thinking. I don't know that many places will be able to have big event parties where you have to pull a permit. Mm -hmm. So one thing I can say about Houston is that, you know, we definitely know how to throw a party. And if that means that I have to bring in more DJs, you know, on a more regular basis than we already do, then we will, you know, hopefully people will come from out of town just to, just to experience that, to feel, you know, it's not going to be, you know, um, the winter party or it's not going to be Memorial week in Pensacola, you know, but if you can put 800 to a thousand people in a building and have a great time with a great DJ, you know, I, I hope people will come to it. Mm -hmm. Well, I can certainly tell you where you can get the good DJs. <laughs> I know a gal that, uh, who can help me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was nice talking to you and nice to see your face and, and we'll talk soon. All right. Take care, Mel. Okay. Bye. 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 Okay.